Hi, and welcome to this afternoon's Books Alive online event with Paul Beavis, uh, illustrator of Your Joking, Become an Expert Joke Teller, and Sue Bradburn from Hamilton City Libraries. Your Joking, Become an Expert Joke Teller is a finalist in the New Zealand Book Awards for Children and Young Adults in the Elsie Block Nonfiction category. Thank you to the New Zealand Libraries Partnership Program for the opportunity to host these events this week and last week. Paul and Sue, take it away whenever you're ready. Kia ora everyone, kia ora Sue. Hello. Hi everyone. Um, so sh shall I start? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, I'm going to uh, share the screen. So um, I'll be a nice small image to one side and you get to look at the nice pictures instead of my head. Uh, I'll just quickly flag up, as I did earlier, this is the book that we're going to be talking about today. Um, and most of the illustrations I talk about, I think, are in this one, or if not, they're in this one. So I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. Um, so hopefully everyone can see that okay. Can everyone hear my voice? Yep, we can hear you. Oh, all right, okay. I just wanted to confirm. Okay. Right, yeah. Um, so I'm going to be just talking about um, how I go about drawing a joke. Um, there's lots of different ways to draw jokes, uh, but this, is, this has been my method. And um, before I, I start going into some of the stuff I've done with, um, with Tom Moffat and his joke books, I'll just show you some of the stuff I've done before. Um, and I'm, a, I'm mainly a picture book author and illustrator, and my first books uh, were normally aimed at slightly younger children. Uh, the very first book I did was called Mrs. Moe's Monster, about this little blue character, and then there was a sequel called Hello World, uh, all about this blue monster and this old lady. But uh, the books I'm pretty best known for doing are with a writer and singer called Dino Yipti, and these books have lots of funny elements in them. Uh, these are the Nemo um, fire engine range um, with monkeys doing funny things and firemen getting soaking wet. And then our slightly more risque one, Stinkosaurus, about a dinosaur which farts a lot, uh, but always farting for a good purpose of helping Santa Claus save the day. Um, but we'll talk about Tom's stuff. So I've done about four or five books with Tom. Uh, the middle book, like I say, is the one that we've been shortlisted for. And I've done about maybe 300 illustrations for Tom. Um, and there are all sorts of things. Sometimes it's illustrating a joke. Sometimes it's just a request for a very literal item of someone being surprised or uh, a dinosaur eating another dinosaur. So for instance here, uh, we've got that dinosaur eating another dinosaur. So Tom would say, you have a dinosaur eating a dinosaur, and I would draw this picture here of a Tyrannosaurus eating a tiny Diplodocus uh, with a nice glass of red wine, and then uh, a cat playing tennis. So I thought we'd have a, instead of the ball, just have a mouse bouncing up and down on his racket. Um, sometimes we, um, the joke will just be, um, Tom will say, can we have Shakespeare? Uh, working on a knock-knock joke. And so I've, dropped, I've drawn Shakespeare at his little desk, uh, writing his the very first knock-knock joke that ever existed. And then we've got a robot chicken pooping out a robot egg. Uh, with the joke books, there's always lots of people to draw. Um, young kids, old kids. We've got a weird guy canoeing without going in the river. We've got a butcher and a small boy who's being told a joke. A grumpy fairy. So you have to try and do lots of different pictures, and lots of different characters all the time. Um, here we've got a vampire snowman. And I, the reason why I like this illustration is it would have been easy to have a snowman having legs uh, so he could chase after people. Um, but I kind of quite like it that he's stuck to the ground and obviously someone's daft enough to go and obviously visit the vampire snowman. And then we've got the uh, zombie um, 
people at, at the beach. And the, the request from Tom here was, could we have two zombies visiting the beach? And I thought, oh, it'd be quite nice if they weren't paddling. And even though they're, they're dead, uh, I've given them water wings or armbands so they don't drown. So sometimes I'm actually adding to the joke as well, um, which, which is, all, which is uh, that's where I get my, have the most fun. Obviously, a joke book isn't a joke book without some jokes about poos. So we've got an um, old lady being told a joke here by a very inter in intelligent poo who's wearing glasses. And then uh, when I put this presentation together yesterday, I, I remember the picture of the two poos in bed, Mr. and Mrs. Poo. And I'd forgotten I'd actually drawn a little picture of them in a frame next to the bed, which I kind of quite, thought was quite cute about them. And then obviously, it did be remiss to not have a, a fart joke in a joke book. Uh, so here we've got Death letting out a fart. And I like that he's, I've just drawn his one finger poking up in the air. So again, here, Tom would just say to me, it would be in the text, Death is farting. And I've got to then kind of come up with um, how I'm going to frame this picture and illustrate it. And then here at the side, um, the joke was about uh, eggs giving each other eggs wedges. Uh, and I kind of quite like it that the other egg, the egg that's given the wedgie, for some reason isn't wearing pants, uh, which doesn't really um, make any sense. But again, it adds to the joke and gives it a bit more um, mileage. But I've done about maybe 300 jokes uh, for Tom. And this, this, is my, this, is, this I think, is my favourite illustration. It's um, quite a simple joke called How Did the Cat Win the Race? It was a cheetah. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit later about how we kind of make decisions about what we're going to draw. I could have drawn this in a number of different ways, the cheetah winning the race against, or a cat winning a race against other cats. But I kind of went with this idea, because I like the idea that the cheetah is really pleased that he's won the race. But he's only up against a little kind of fat, round pig, and even worse, a fish in a bowl, which, how, how is that going to be um, running along? And also like that he's the only one with a medal. So I think this cheetah, for some reason, has got a self-esteem issue. So again, Tom's come up with his joke, and then I've added a little bit more so that instead of the reader just reading through the jokes and laughing, they get the extra uh, illustration, and maybe there's a bit more narrative for them to work with, and to think a bit more into the story. Because, I mean, I was wondering about this last time, whether I could actually write a story about this cheetah who's got three, two friends with a pig and a goldfish in a bowl. So um, I'm going to talk a bit about um, when I was younger and just show you uh, three pictures that I did before, um, uh, before I got to the, about the age of 12. So the picture on the left is me as a very shy five-year-old. Um, I think I just wanted to blend into the wall at that age. I've got brown hair, a brown tie and brown trousers and almost a brown patterned shirt. Uh, and then here's me, uh, maybe 10 or 11, a little bit more confidence. And back then I had hair. Um, so here's a picture I did when I was five. As you can see, I wasn't a uh, young Picasso. It's pretty much very similar to what lots of five-year-olds draw at the time, but I just like drawing all the time. But I wasn't particularly super talented. You can see one leg's a, a bit fatter than the other leg. Uh, and the, the colouring in is not too bad. Um, this here, though, is, is, I think it's an important picture for me personally. Uh, I think I was nine at the time, and I think if you want to be a budding artist, an illustrator, any time there's a chance to get your work out there, whether it's drawing someone a birthday card or a Christmas card or a post poster or something. So I think I was nine or ten when I did this, and the teacher said, who wants to draw the, the picture for the, the school sports day? And I put my hand up, and they chose me. So I, I drew my sports day poster, and it stuck all around the school, and I thought I was famous. Um, but what's interesting is that I showed this picture a couple of years ago at the school, and I've seen this picture loads and loads of times, and I think this is one of the most important things about being an illustrator or a designer or someone who wants to get into creativity of writing as well, is you've got to be willing to, to make mistakes. And it wasn't until two years ago that one young little seven-year-old child actually pointed out that all my runners have only got one arm, if you look, I've only got one arm, and for some reason, I can draw the back arm on the runners, 
but I could draw a back leg. So, um, again, no one ever noticed that, and it wasn't until someone pointed it out uh, a couple of years ago. So, if you make mistakes, don't worry about them. And then, when I was 11, I was quite a fidgety little boy. I could never uh, wait for English lessons to end before I wanted to start my art lessons. So, often I would draw my English book when I should have been writing, I'd, I'd be drawing. But this one I found when I was, that I did when I was 11. And I think this is actually a story here, even though it's a cartoon. Uh, and we've got the shark here. I was into the film Jaws at the time. And you've got the little guys in the boat. And I normally ask the question, what's going to happen next? And people always say, the shark's going to eat the people in the boat. And then you say, do the people in the boat know they're going to get eaten? They don't know they're going to get eaten. And the big clue is because it says it's night time already. And then the other visual clue we've got is how do we as a viewer know it's not night time, there's the sun. And I, I, I really, I'm really proud of this picture now. Uh, and it's quite strange that I kind of, it took me another 35 years before I had the confidence to be a cartoonist again, that I was actually doing this when I was uh, 11 or 10 or whatever age I was. So if you are a budding artist at the moment, really believe in yourself and if you've got if you can show your work and find someone to champion your work that's really really important um because you don't want to waste 30 years like i did before you actually start properly so i've got three tips that i'm going to share with you um today uh, and i'm assuming uh, most of you who have come on today like drawing and stuff um there is no hard and secret rule about getting better at drawing uh the number one thing is to practice. There's practice all the time. Get yourself a sketchbook, some of the cheap ones from the warehouse. And just if you can just draw something once every day, even this, I, I often draw lots of little faces on a little pad I've got just to kind of uh, keep your exercise part of your, your brain working, the drawing part of your brain working. The other important thing is to copy. And I know that it's frowned upon copying stuff, but I used to copy everything when I was younger. I'd copy BMX logos, I'd copy American football logos, and particularly the little, the little mascots and stuff. All that stuff is wonderful because you're learning from professionals how to do stuff and understand why one technique works and one other technique doesn't work. And, and I think, as I said earlier about that, that poster, is it's really important that you show your work to people. Don't just show mum and dad or your brother. Show, show your friends and show other friends who are into drawing and stuff, because it's always good to get other people's feedback on stuff. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to go through a joke, which is in the in the, um, the book, You're Joking. And it's on page 69, it's a banana joke. And here's, here is the actual joke. Why did the banana visit the doctor? It wasn't peeling well. So... Maybe you can write that down on a piece of paper, or maybe you can have a go at trying to draw that later. But I'll show you how I, I tackled this particular joke. Um, and I've just got to go back to here. It's, the reason why I've written Think It and Draw It is, is that you want to try and draw as quickly as possible because thoughts are coming to your brain as you get better and better at drawing, and you just got to get them down quickly, not fuss too much. It, it should be a really rough doodle. So... If I think about this joke, why did the banana why did the banana visit the doctor? We've got three important bits of information here. We've got the banana, which is the star of the joke. We've got visit the doctor, and then it wasn't peeling well. Um, so those are the key things we need to be thinking about. So we're obviously going to have a, a doctor in a picture, and is this the doctor? So how could we frame this soon? So the first thing, um, and I can't remember what I thought of, I'll show you what I actually did at the end. But I suppose maybe one of the first things that you're going to think of, the doctor, the banana was visiting the doctor. So maybe we'd have a, for instance, a banana. These are going to be terrible pictures of bananas. And he's maybe arriving at the doctor's. So this is how I'd normally um, work out my jokes because I just want to visually see it. I've got the idea in my head, and I've got banana arriving at the doctor's surgery. And it'd just be a quick doodle like this. And I'd strike surgery up here. 
maybe write doctor on here. You have opening hours or something. And here we have the banana arriving at the doctor's surgery. And I've got the idea in my head, but seeing it visual, I can think, now, is, it, is that funny? Is there funny elements to it? Um, but the moment, it's, it's, fairly, it's fairly literal. It's, there's, there's not much humour. So instead of the doctor, the banana visiting the doctors from the outside, maybe we sit inside. Uh, and every time you get the doctors, you're at the waiting room. And um, the waiting room's always got the cliche of uh, a table of bad magazines. So maybe we've got our banana uh, sat on the chair in the waiting room. Um, so that here's the chair. And maybe he's reading a magazine. So we could come up with a name for what the magazine could be called, uh, Banana World or something. So you've got an extra joke there. And we have maybe a table with more, banana, uh, more magazines. Maybe maybe a bowl of fruit might be funny. Because we're going to have a banana in there. Um, and then maybe someone sat next to him with a broken arm or something. And he's like thinking, why am I sat next to a banana? In a waiting room, I've got a broken arm. That's not a particularly good broken arm, but you get what I mean. So that's how I would tackle joke. As you can see, that we can't. That is not good enough to print in a book. Uh, but I've seen what works. What what's not going to work? This idea here is just a bit dull, and this idea. It's, it's nice, we can add a lot of stuff in here, but weirdly enough, it's going to be quite complex. And in the joke book, we want something that's fairly easy to understand and fairly quick. Uh, and also, as I'm quite lazy, it's quite a lot of work to draw all that. So the third idea I actually had, or the idea I actually had on the day, um, was I drew this sketch. So this was in pencil, and I find pencil a lot easier to work with. I drew the banana, you can see it very roughly on here sat on the treatment table and a doctor looking at his watch and I, I added a quick squiggly line here for a, a stethoscope uh, so he's seen if the brand's feeling well. Uh, and that was the idea I decided to go with. So what I do then was I put another piece of paper on top and I do the ink version. So um, I'd, I never really try and refine the drawing tightly down. Um, I just use that as a guide and I do my neat and neat ink version at the top. And I might do that two or three times uh, just to get exactly the look I want. And then once I'm happy with the, the finished ink version, that gets scanned in the computer and we colour it in. So it starts off from there, rough version, ink, and then colour. So you might have some ideas about how that joke could have been better done. Uh, like I said, that's on page 69. Uh, so maybe have a have a try at that one a bit later. The second joke, and this is on page fifty four, it's called "Why do French people eat snails?" So again, we're going to look at the kind of important information. So that's French people, snails, and the punchline was they don't like fast food. So that's our three three key elements of uh, our joke. So. Again, I'm, I'm trying to think fast. Uh, I want to try and throw as many ideas out, down onto paper as possible. If I can come up with two, maybe three ideas, that's great. Sometimes you can come up with more, uh, and sometimes your first idea is the best idea, and sometimes the fifth idea is the best idea. I think throwing down the ideas as quickly as possible is a much better way of just sitting there and, and panicking. Um, I think throwing down a bad idea it's always better than throwing down no idea because if you've got a bad idea down, at least at least you've got something to change. So um, that's how, I've got the finished drawing obviously in the book, but I'm going to think how I tackled this one. So I'm just going to quickly check again. Why do French people eat snails? Okay, so we could go with a cliche. We could just go with a French person wearing a beret. Uh, apologies to any people with French relatives. He's putting the traditional stripy shirt and he's chasing after maybe a hamburger or something or some French fries. 
uh, well, no, it's got to be a burger because French fries wouldn't be making diff- uh, wouldn't make sense. So he's running after them. Uh, again, apologies for the scruffy drawing, but again, this is the key. Uh, it's a good tip if you want to make someone look like they're moving really fast. Never have their feet touch the ground. Always have a, a shadow underneath it. It looks like they're running really fast. So we've got our French guy, and he's chasing the burger down the road. Um, let's maybe get with that line there. Uh, a few little sesame seeds on the top. And we're going to draw our burger with some legs on as well. Maybe just draw a faster leg in there. So our burger's running down the road. So there's, there's our French person chasing fast food. You, guys, you can't catch fast food. That's the reason why you like snails. Um... But maybe we could just use a spell element and combine that with fast food, like McDonald's. So um, I'm wondering whether we could have something like a French fries container, like you get in McDonald's, we we'll call it McSnails. And then what we could do is just a very simple visual joke, is just have a load of snails stacked inside our little container, like so. Uh, and make them, we'd probably make them look as gooey as possible uh, and maybe not look very happy that they're about to be eaten. And we could probably have maybe one of them slid out and is on the run. That ties into our idea of fast food. Um, he's obviously going very slow. And another one could be coming out here. And that I kind of quite like. I'm wondering why I didn't choose that idea in the, in the first place. So we've got two jokes here. I think the snails in the um, French pie container are a bit more fun than the, the French man chasing the, uh, the burger. But uh, the joke I actually finished illustrating, which I don't know how this one popped into my mind. I just decided to put a snail on a motorbike. Um, and he is being fast food, but he's kind of getting away on his, his motorbike. And what's interesting is I originally drew it. Uh, he had a crash helmet on up here, as you can see up here, if I just draw up here. He had a crash helmet on. And it's exactly the same drawing pretty much. Um, but I just changed it to have his antennas here. So they're like blowing in the wind. And that immediately just made it look like he was a lot faster. So you can see here, there's the three, the three possible jokes, and that's the one we went with. So again, if you guys want to write that joke down, it's page 54. Uh, and maybe you can come up with a, a different alternative, and uh, we can maybe put that on my Facebook page and show uh, how you go in a different manner. Okay, drawing tip number two. So... Enjoy mistakes and don't throw work, throw work away too quickly. Uh, and I'll come back to this point a bit later on. Is it's, it's always important to kind of try and, I mean, I keep loads and loads of stuff and every couple of years I have to have a big clear out. But it's worth holding on to stuff because you never know. Because sometimes you'll do a drawing and you think that's terrible. And then you look at it in two or three days' time and suddenly with fresh eyes you'll see something different. It's a bit like writing when you're writing a story and you think that's not working. And it's because normally what's happened is you've actually done something new and you've surprised yourself and you're not sure. So I think don't throw away work too quickly. And as I said earlier about that drawing I did for the school sports day, is we're going to make mistakes and that's how you learn from mistakes. If everything's correct, you never break through and do something new. And one little bonus tip that uh, I can remember someone giving me when I was um, maybe about 13 or 14 was a good way of practicing drawing and just building up confidence is to draw stuff. So it can be anything in your house. It could be a lamp. It can be your mum and dad or your brother or your sister or even yourself, a, a self-portrait. Is to practice drawing but not take your pencil off the paper because suddenly your your hand's going to make decisions which and it takes your, your thought process out of it because often your brain's in there going, that doesn't look right, this doesn't look right. But if you kind of take that part of your brain out of the equation and just draw without taking your pencil off the paper, 
you'll suddenly surprise yourself with some really interesting results. Some of it will be absolutely rubbish, I can guarantee. But there'll also be some stuff which will be, you'll go, well, hang about, that's kind of quite interesting. Um, so this part is uh, a couple more illustrations I'm just going to show. And the first one is about finding the drawing to show that um, I can come up with an idea and it'll take me a little while to work it out to get it to, to look right. And also, the second part, the second drawing I'll show is how I actually lost a drawing. The initial idea was good and then I kind of overworked it, which sometimes happens. Again, that happens uh, when you're writing stuff. Your, your, your initial story will be good and then you'll overwork it and you'll kind of kill it. Um, it's, uh, it's life, basically. Um, so the joke here was Tom just wanted a child looking down a toilet and 300 drawings I've done with Tom, toilets do turn up quite a bit. So I've drawn a picture of Tigger from Winnie the Pooh looking down a toilet, which I can't remember what that joke was about. I'm assuming it was about Winnie the Pooh being down the toilet or something. Uh, another one of a man reaching down the toilet to the U Ben to unblock it. I don't know what that joke was, but um, I, made it, I gave him a really long arm to exaggerate it. It was pretty double jointed. And then here, was a witch going to the toilet. And I kind of quite like this one because she's got a broom resting up against the wall and a little cat, for some reason, is wearing a watch and is impatient about how long she's taking. But this joke, this was a joke that Tom wanted or wanted a illustration for, a child looking down a toilet. So that was the finished picture. Um, now, this was the original sketch. Now, as you can see, it's very, very rough. I've got the toilet shape down here. If I bring this up here, maybe change the colour of the pen. So the toilet shape here, and then I've got this person sort of doubled over, kind of, and they're holding onto the, the, the toilet chain up here. And that, that looks quite good, but it's it was going to be difficult to draw the person bending over without it looking like they're a, a very supple gymnast. Um, so I did another version, and here it's all the legs are me trying to work out where the legs need to be positioned. So I've got this leg here. I'll just get the right level. This leg here is wedging against the wall. And it was, where is the other leg going to go? Is it going to go up in the air? Is it going to stick out here? And the other arm's going to hold onto the chain. So that was me working it out. And again, you can see here, this is about making mistakes and testing ideas out and not doing five or six drawings, trying to do them all in one go. Um, so I decided that, that was the drawing. I was going to have this, this foot here was going to the wall. And this one, I think I had the leg originally poking up here. But then I kind of quite like the idea of the chain coming down here and the other leg hooking in. So you can see I'm, I'm constantly, with certain jokes, trying to, I'm working for a process. Um, again, referring to writing again, it's a, a bit like editing. You're trying one idea, you're trying another, you're seeing what works. So then finally, here was the inked version. And then we've got the coloured inversion of the person looking down the toilet. Okay, the next one is Tom wanted an illustration showing someone being surprised. Um, and here's the finished illustration. And it's the old classic of a bucket on a door, person pushes the door and the, and the the bucket falls down. And the idea uh, Tom wanted, it was a surprise joke. So I've just written jokes on the, on the bucket at the top. Um, and this was the very first picture I did. As you can see, it's a door and then a hand coming kind of to push the handle and the bucket of jokes at the top. And then I thought, well, it'd be quite good if someone was waiting on the other side ready to kind of go surprise. So I did the little girl in. Again, you can see it's still a rough drawing. I changed the girl slightly so she's looking out at the reader now as if like kind of to say, look what's going to happen. And I added, added a foot down here as well. Um, and that's what I decided to go with. That's what I thought was the best way to do this joke. And here's the illustration. And here was the final joke. And what's strange is I put this presentation together yesterday and I was thinking, actually, my first drawing was actually much better. It's simple. It has all the information that we need. Here, I've just put too much, there's too much information going on. We've got 
the foot, we've got the hand, we've got the little girl, and we've got the bucket. And it's four different elements. Whereas here, we've got the door, we've got the hand, and we've got the bucket. And I need to give credit sometimes to the reader to work out what's going to happen next. That would have been a much better way of doing it. So again, sometimes, and this refers back to what I said earlier about keeping everything you work on to start off with. In the first few years when you start drawing, it's keep everything because sometimes your first instincts will actually be right. And sometimes you can just overwork a joke. And here I've overworked the joke and I wish I could go back and change it to this. But unfortunately, sometimes you have to live on your mistakes. Um, and then the final thing, the final tip I've got is, and this is interesting, is you don't have to be good at drawing to make funny drawings. Uh, and what I mean by this is we're not ha we don't have to draw realistic stuff to do, do good, good joke drawings. Uh, they can be rough scribbles, they can be stick figures, uh, and people will still love them, as long as there's a good idea behind it. Sometimes, uh, I know there's plenty of people much better at drawing uh, than me, but I think kind of sometimes, uh, which um, I enjoy the most out of my drawings, is the actual the funny element to it. I know I think it could have been a better drawing, but if I can put, actually make the drawing funny for people to look at, it's going to work. And I'll just show you a few examples of other people whose drawings are very basic. So this is a guy in the UK called Purple Ronnie, and I think pretty much anyone could draw those pictures. I mean, circles and triangles and stick figures, and you get the joke immediately. Um, he also does. Uh, he also goes by another name, Edward Monkton. Uh, and he's, he's, he's admitted in interviews he, he can't draw very well, but he writes funny stories and he draws his very simple characters. I think we can all probably draw the penguin of death. Um, I'm sure um, all of you have heard of the film Shrek, uh, big Hollywood blockbuster, but the original book written back in the 60s or 70s was very different. And uh, here's a picture of Shrek, and I think we can all probably pretty much draw Shrek. Um, I mean, that's just felt tip pens. And again, it's a humour in the store, in the drawing, more than the actual technical skill. I think don't worry too much about the technical skill of being good at drawing. Let's uh, go back to my slide. You don't have to be good at drawing to make funny drawings. And then finally, I'll just finish on this picture here, which uh, has got a guy saying to a badly drawn dog, bad drawing. Uh, hopefully you can see that at the bottom there. Uh, I think that's the kind of um, laughing at your own work is really important as well. And I'll just leave this, this joke up here. This one is for you guys to try. Um, I have actually illustrated this joke in the book. Uh, why did the police officer stay in bed? They wanted to remain undercover. So how I think about the way I've talked, what, talked about putting the illustration together. I had to do quick sketches of working out an idea that you've got in your head, but you sometimes you need to see it as a, as a picture. And if you jot that down, and if anyone comes up with any good cartoons and they want to send it through, and I'm happy to put it on my Facebook page and um, to, um, to, sh to show your work off. So um, I think if I click on that, hopefully, did everyone hear that? Okay, cool. Have I got this on silent? No, I can't. Uh, so I wonder if anyone, uh, hopefully that's okay. And I wonder if anyone's got any questions. Anyone got any questions? Mr. Duncan is silent. <laughs> any questions? Mm -hmm. We're all busy drawing. Oh, right, okay. Uh, well, uh, here's a couple of things that I'll quickly show. Um, I just draw with normal, normal pencils from the warehouse. Uh, I just draw with normal photocopy paper, nothing flashy. And also, because when you're drawing, buy, always buy the um, ten pack of pencils. Um, and when they get down to a certain length, you can stick two together. Because I don't like to waste my pencils. So there's a good tip for saving money. Stick your pencils together when you get down to a very really short pencil. You don't want to throw your pencils away. And then the other thing that sometimes I get asked is, what do I draw with? Um, so when I do the ink drawings, uh, I'm trying to get that up there. 
It's a dip pen. Um, and it gets dipped in the ink. Uh, and I draw with one of those. Um, so you can get these from the art shop. They're maybe about $10. But they last a good while, but you need a bit of practice with them. Has anyone got any questions, or has Sue got a question? Any questions? You're obviously standing on your on your assignment that you sit down. Oh, uh, right. Uh, people stand on the police one, or the banana, or the uh, snail one. I think yep. they've started with the policeman. All oh, right, cool. Well, I, I, if, it, if anyone gets a, a joke finished, I'm quite happy to put them up on uh, on, on Facebook and uh, I'll, maybe, maybe I'll, um, Tom will be happy to give away a few books and prizes. That's awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. That was really great. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>